Today, let's talk about the differences between Zapier and IFTTT, or the uh, the real name, I guess, is If This Then That. Uh, this question comes up a lot in the automation world, um, probably more than anything else. Which tool should I use to automate my processes? So uh, it depends what you're trying to do, really. Uh, like most decisions, it, it always depends. Uh, but in general, IFTTT is more for personal stuff and Zapier is more for business. It's general, but um, you can kind of see that just from looking at their homepage immediately, right? You can see with IFTTT, we've got um, the Alexa devices and, and speakers and, and light bulbs. Like it's quite, um, it's like smart home type stuff, right? Internet of things. And if you look at the Zapier homepage, it talks about connecting your apps and automating workflows. So this is very much business focused, right? So um, I'm going to jump back to IFTTT uh, and show you a little bit, a little bit about how it works. So another another key difference with uh, with business apps is that with if this then that, it's uh, it literally is just that. If this thing then that thing. It's one item. It's one trigger, one action. Whereas Zapier allows you to do a lot more things in one uh, applet or one zap in, in Zapier. So IFTTT call them applets uh, and Zapier call them zaps, like the, the workflow, I guess. So if I uh, have a look here, uh, sorry, I have a look at this one, which is a um, applet that I've uh, configured earlier. It's literally one thing. If, if something happens in Google Home, uh, here's some just options, and then I'm going to create a card in Trello. So one thing, one thing. It's really that simple. Uh, and if I jump over to Zapier, uh, this one has many, many steps. Um, so we're triggering something based on the RSS feed, running some JavaScript, um, doing some like uh, string manipulation, and then posting it to a bunch of social feeds, for example, right? But the point there is you can do lots of things in one zap, whereas IFTTT, you're doing one thing in one applet. So there's no delays, there's no conditions, which are all things that are built in to Zapier. I have seen that there are sort of workarounds, like people have built external services to help you create delays in IFTTT, but it's just so much nicer in Zapier when you can just go delay for one day or something like that. Now, I did say that for the most part, IFTTT is personal. But you can do some business things, right? So you just saw in my example there that I had, well, in this example, I was using Trello, right? Which is a uh, uh, kind of like a project management system. I use it for more of like a personal to-do list. But if you jump over to uh, ifttt.com slash services, you'll see all of the kind of things it integrates with. So straight up, we see appliances, right? So we can see that smart home personal kind of thing. And you can just scroll through here and see what you can uh, integrate with, you know, but there are things that are business like, like WordPress and, and there's some business tools here, um, calendars, I mean, cloud storage that's like business so I'll, i'm not going to go through the whole page here because it's huge uh, but you can have a look what kind of things you can integrate with likewise over on zapier if we go to apps at the top here you can scroll through and search for the apps you're already using and see what it integrates with like you can see just looking at what they put first it's pretty obvious this is a business kind of tool now, there are some things that you can do with IFTTT that work in a business sense uh, that you just can't do with Zapier. So for example, um, IFTTT has some really cool integrations with Google Home where you can create custom uh, phrases to say, like you could say, okay, Google, add something to my Trello, which is exactly what this is saying here. Uh, see, I've got the dollar sign. So that's actually like a, it's taking an input from what I say to Google Home and then I can put something on my Trello. And I don't believe, uh, at least when I recorded this, that that's possible with Zapier. So IFTTT are really strong on that like smart home uh, kind of thing and internet of things. So if you wanna use that kind of device to trigger something in your business, uh, IFTTT can work. Another thing IFTTT does is gives you the ability to add buttons on your home screen uh, that trigger applets. So, because they have a mobile app, Zapier does not at this stage. 
Uh, and so then you can have a button on your on home screen that you press and it triggers something. So you know, a classic uh, smart home example might be like I'm coming home, so it might start the uh, air conditioning or something or the heating or whatever, but there may be something in your business that you want to trigger just by hitting a button. So that is where IFTTT would uh, come in handy. So other than what I've talked about here, I pretty much do not use IFTTT anymore. Uh, it's only when they're those things that I can't do in Zapier. Um, one use case, however, though, I used to do this regularly is uh, if there was, if I was approaching my Zap limit for my plan on Zapier, because obviously Zapier is a paid tool, uh, IFTTT is free. Uh, but if I was approaching my Zap limit, I might create something really basic in IFTTT just so I wasn't going to put myself over the limit and have to go up a plan. So one example is basically what you can see here is just saying like, on, on a recurring schedule, creating items in my uh, Trello. Um, this isn't even required anymore because Trello has a repeating card, but really simple thing. It was like on Mondays at 8 a.m. create a, a task in my to-do list. So something like that, that uh, would have put me over my Zapier limit, I would create in IFTTT because it's free. So that's one example of why, when you can use it. And I, and I think that pretty much wraps it up. I've got, you can also find out some more about um, IFTTT if you go to uh, slash discover, I'll link all these up below uh, and you just can see some other ideas that people uh, have used. Uh, you can just sort of scroll through and the equivalent of this in uh, Zapier is if you go to explore. So uh, again, so IFTTT, there was services to see all the things you can do. Uh, sorry, the apps you can use in Zapier, that's called apps. And in IFTTT, there's discover. And in Zapier, there is explore. So, and in this one, you can, it'll just give you some examples between apps and you can actually turn apps on and off here. So if I was gonna say, I wanna use uh, Gmail and Google Sheets, oops, it's delayed there. So Google Sheets and um, I've turned pipe drive off. Uh, so this is gonna give me zaps that include Google Sheets and Gmail. So I can just see what kind of cool things I can do with those two apps. You search for them in here, tick them on and off, and uh, it's a pretty cool way to see what is possible. Alrighty, that is it for now. If you would like to learn more about ways to automate your business, get some cool ideas, uh, head over to jimmyrose.me and uh, sign up for the list or hit that subscribe button below this video to get hit with tips and tricks and all the cool stuff that I find. That's all and I'll see you in the next video.